Hi, I'm Melissa LeClaire. And I'm Sasha LeClaire, and we are LeClaire Decor. Yes, we're here to talk to you about a really exciting project, our LA project with James Charles. We want to walk you through how it came to be and all of the design details. All right, so our number one asked question about this project is how it came to be. And the story is probably a lot more simple than people think. James just followed us on Instagram and messaged us and said he really liked our work, said he just bought a new house and was wondering if we would take on this beautiful project in Los Angeles. And of course we said We were yes. like, yeah, sure, no problem. When we flew down to meet him and then visit the new house, this was so exciting. It was such a beautiful space and he was so lovely to talk to. Our ideas started flowing. We were walking in the door and already envisioning all of the different elements going in there. So to walk you through all of the design choices, we're gonna have Meredith, who was the lead designer on this project, and Grace, our design manager, come and talk to you about how it all came together. Hi everyone, I'm Meredith and I was the lead designer on this project. And I'm Grace, I am the design manager at Leclerc Decor. The first step in any project is establishing the vision by getting our clients to submit to us a Pinterest board that showcases their vision and what they like and the colors and textures and finishes that appeal to them. We had James submit a Pinterest board to us and we wanted to balance the sort of modern farmhouse style of the house with the California location of the project. This is a spec house, meaning it was built to sell. James had just purchased the house and it wasn't completely finished yet. So we were able to make some little tweaks before the house was completed. We pared down wall treatments in the dining room, stairwell, the office, small reno to the main bath in the basement. But mostly we were super, super happy and thrilled with all the finishes that the builder had chosen and super pumped to get started on the design. We are back in beautiful LA. It's such a gorgeous night. Workers are all done on site for the day. That's gonna be magically transformed, just like that. One of the first things that you notice about this house when you walk in is that you open that beautiful, oversized front door and you have a view all the way through the house to the back and into the amazing backyard. And we really wanted to highlight the openness and the grandeur of that foyer. So we kept things pretty simple in the entrance. We just did these amazing lantern style lights that sort of set that farmhouse tone for the house. And then we did a beautiful wood grain sideboard with a statement mirror. But otherwise we really let that big open space speak for itself, lead you to the staircase and kind of introduce you to the rest of the home. Next up is the piano room or the grand room. And in here, I think we really wanted to highlight the architecture of the space, the huge vaulted ceilings, this beautiful black marble fireplace. We did a huge chandelier from the middle beam. We did two story linen drapes and we put in a really beautiful ginkgo tree. It's 11 feet. And then the showpiece in this room is the baby grand piano that our client loves to play, super talented. And then we did like a really beautiful chaise, so not to block your sight line into the dining room and a couple of low ottomans. So there's a lot of seating for when he wants to be playing the piano for his friends. But pretty pared down and minimal. And yeah, just let the architecture speak for itself. Just off the great room and open to the rest of the house is the formal dining room. And James made it really clear right up front that he's not a super formal guy and probably wouldn't have been using this for really elegant formal dinner parties, but he still wanted a space that felt beautiful and inviting to guests. We did a beautiful oak table with again, high contrast black chairs. And one of my favorite pieces that we did in this room actually is a framed print of a photograph that he had actually taken in his travels. We wanted to find a way to include something that would be special to him in this space. Opposite the piano and dining room are the guest bed, powder room, mud room, and office. The mudroom, we did an upholstered cushion, some really cute pillows, hooks on the wall. Powder room, we replaced the countertop and added some art, but otherwise they're great spaces. Those spaces kind of lead into the guest bed, which I actually kind of like to call my room because I stayed there during install, but I think mostly his parents will be staying there. 
yeah. or you know other guests to the house. James isn't super crazy about beachy style, but I was pretty excited about doing a California project, so I think he let us take some liberties in this space in one of the other guest bedrooms and do a lot of blue tones and like kind of add a bit more of a beachy vibe, which I was super happy about. Right across from the wine cellar and butler's pantry area is this small little office and James was pretty open about the fact that like a lot of us, he mostly sits in his kitchen island or his bedroom working on his computer. So we really wanted to just make sure that it felt comfortable and inviting in case he ever did want to use it. We added a gorgeous wood desk, some beautiful guest chairs with that rattan detail, added a small piece of artwork in the existing millwork that was already there, and then just finished up the space with some decor. On the left hand side as you walk towards the back of the house is this amazing chef's dream kitchen. It has a perimeter of black matte cabinetry and then two huge oversized islands. Because this was a spec house, this kitchen was already designed by the company who had built it and it was really our job just to come in and add in those details and custom touches that really made it feel like it flows with the rest of the house. So, one of the biggest changes we made was these oversized pendants that we put above the closest island. We really feel like those added a sort of geometric and linear touch that gives the kitchen that modern farmhouse flair. Another big thing that we added to this space was these amazing leather crosswoven stools and they did have to come all the way from Bali, <laughs> but they really make the space, they add an element of texture and warmth and imperfection that actually goes so far to make a space feel homey. Right across from the kitchen, we have the living room. James has a ton of friends and family that come over and they hang out in there all the time. So it was really important to give them as much seating as possible. So we did this huge white custom LD sectional. And then we did these two beautiful croft house, white kind of like hammock style chairs. The thin metal frame on these chairs kind of helped them feel less bulky while still being huge and comfortable to sit in. In the middle of this space to sort of anchor the entire room, we decided to go high contrast and do this bulky, oversized, black, chunky coffee table. I feel like it mixes really well with the light, soft furniture in there, and it created the most amazing space to do some coffee table styling, have oversized books, vases with lots of botanicals and stems that you can change out, as well as just being a great drop zone for things like gaming controllers, which we know he loves to game with his friends, a place to put your feet up at the end of a long day. My favorite thing about this room is the artwork. On top of being an incredible makeup artist, he's also an amazing photographer. He had all this incredible photography, so he sent us over a bunch of options and these 40 by 60 frames, and they really filled the space. They're just so gorgeous behind the sectional. It was really the main floor that set the tone for this whole space. We knew the changes that we made to the house itself and all of the beautiful furnishings and decor, we really sort of captured that Californian farmhouse mix that we were going for. So when you walk up these beautiful stairs, you get to this amazing landing which serves multiple purposes. There's tons of beautiful natural light coming through the skylights, so we did a huge oversized mirror. And then one of James's must-haves in the house was a rolling library ladder, so there was huge built-ins at the top of the stairs. It was the perfect place to put this in. And then this beautiful Bobby Burke, like, bukla armchair, so it's like the perfect place to cozy yeah. up. It's so the natural cute. light, it's perfect. It's one of my like favorite places in the house just because of yeah. like natural light. It looks so cute and cozy. You can cut up and have like a drink or tea. The master bedroom is always like one of my favorite places. And this one has all of the things that you would want in your bedroom. Beautiful natural light, 
fireplace. I made a gorgeous ensuite attached to it. I would say we went California romantic. We did a canopy bed, which is really nice because they're vaulted ceiling, so it kind of draws your eye up. The one thing that we maybe struggled with a little bit in this project was landing on lighting fixtures. He can be a little picky with lighting fixtures, which he will fully admit to. We are really happy that both of us fell in love with this beautiful chandelier and it's the perfect romantic piece for this space. We kept it pretty minimal otherwise with a really soft plush rug, a couple of pops of cognac leather in the bench at the foot of the bed and the armchair off to the side, but otherwise let the canopy bed be the focus of the space. One of the nicest things about this project, it being California, was that we could take full advantage of the outdoor spaces. And this main suite has these gorgeous floor to ceiling doors that just open right up out to the main patio. This was gonna be like his little extension yeah. of his room and we were all about it. I mean, <laughs> it was gorgeous. Yeah, I was definitely. like, this is huge. Yeah, so we really wanted to have a really cozy place. That was one of the things that he said he was gonna do like in the evening, kind of cozy up. So that was a really strategic thing, mm -hmm. having a fire pit out there. So nice. I know, I kind of want to live out there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Off the main suite is the beautiful ensuite. It's really nice, big size. It's kind of designed as like his and hers. So two separate vanities on either side, a water closet on either side, and a bathtub kind of anchoring in the middle of the space. So we changed all the lighting, got rid of one of the smaller vanities. So it was less like his and hers and just big open space. Yeah, I love that the, the wood on the vanities warms up the space because it is a lot of white. Yeah, for sure. And then we put the black lighting so it adds a little bit of contrast and really creates a nice vibe in there and it's very yeah. modern, which we haven't done modern. before. Yeah. I like love how it looks and it totally works for his vibe. Yeah. One of the guest rooms upstairs we turned into a fitting room. And I actually really love this space. It's super simple. We did a huge, massive kind of like ballet style mirror. Did a couple of armchairs and then two clothing racks. But I really love the vibe in this room. We mm -hmm. did like these really beautiful linen curtains and yeah, it's just super warm, minimal, mm -hmm. cute space. The last bedroom was actually designed as a guest bedroom, but Trevor, one of his good friends, actually moved in right when we were installing. He's still in school, so we ended up putting the desk that was supposed to go in Melissa's room in his room, and it looks really beautiful. We put a mirror over top of it, um, so he could do his work from there, and a little beachy vibe. It looks so cute. Yeah, next, we're gonna move on to the basement, which is the James Charles HQ. Sisters, sisters. If you've seen James's video about the house, which I highly recommend you go check out if you haven't already, <laughs> he talks about the fact that it was really the basement that sold him on this home. He had been dreaming about a space that could function as his home, but also as a headquarters for his growing business and beauty empire. When you walk down and into the basement space, you're actually met with this row of built-ins, which was perfect for us. So we ended up doing a dining room table there and really creating a boardroom space for him, which is perfect for him to meet with his team, to meet with clients. He really has a professional space where he can give presentations, see presentations, jot down some ideas, yeah. and gather with his team to talk business. Directly across from that is this cute little nook sitting in the stairwell. The light filters down and it looks so picturesque. So he can have people waiting there or really you could just stare at it because it's so beautiful. It's gorgeous. When I saw the first photo, I thought it was a picture of a spa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. One of the bigger cosmetic changes we made to any space in the house was this downstairs bathroom that's just around the corner when you come down the stairs. And it had been imagined as this sort of glam, bistro style bathroom, which was cool, but it just sort of didn't flow with the rest of what we were doing yep. in the home. So we kind of paired everything back, did a really beautiful textured subway tile, changed out the stone for something a little lighter and brighter. And now it's still a very simple, beautiful yeah. bathroom, but it just flows a little bit better with the rest of the house.
Okay, so next up you walk through these big glass beautiful doors and the builder actually originally envisioned this as sort of a spa area. There was gonna be a gym, um, a hot tub, a sauna, but we needed none of that. We needed it to be a studio space for him. He needed a space where he could film, where he could also host other people if he had guests on. He needed sort of seating. So we were able to like retransform that space and really utilize it for a studio space for him. This was one of the biggest sort of like structural and construction undertakings of the whole project. It took a long time to sort of get that pool filled in, yeah. figure out what we were gonna do for the flooring in there that had been built obviously as a pool and not as a beauty studio. So it took a little bit of work to be the sister filming studio, but I think in the end, it turned out to be the studio that he had been dreaming about. Next up is the sister's merch room. We added the Bradshaw pendant, which really gives it kind of a glamorous feel. Mm -hmm. The counter table, it needed to be both beautiful and functional. They needed to be able to like pack and unpack boxes here. We added a few benches in case anyone was needing some seating. And I really feel like it pulled it all together. It really adds to the room and it's such a great space for him and all of his beautiful merchandise. What we had to do in here was create beautiful storage that would have open display for colorful hoodies, collection of other clothing items, but then also store the makeup that he uses to create his amazing videos every week. So one of the final spaces in the lower level of this house and one that I am most personally jealous <laughs> not to have in my own home is the full at-home salon that we yeah. created. There was sort of this maybe secondary bedroom down there that could have been used as a guest space. But as we started kind of conceptualizing the house, we realized that it would be so convenient for him and his team and his friends to have a space to sort of host people who do in-home beauty treatments like haircuts. James amazing manicures that he has all the time. So we really wanted to create a special and fun place where that could happen without sort of bleeding into the rest of the house. We are so grateful to have worked with such an amazing client on an amazing project in LA. I mean, when he first reached out to us, a question that he had and a lot of people have is like, how do we work remotely? I would say it's not easy, but it's it's simple, it's simple. because we, our work is presented to our clients most of the time digitally. And I loved presenting to the client digitally. I felt like it gave them time to digest the information, they could sit, and then we could have a chat about it afterwards, about what they liked or didn't like about it, and we could make some tweaks from there. So being digital for us has been kind of at the core of who we are from the beginning. And obviously for implementation at the end of a project, it's not a huge deal in this global world that we're in to make sure that all of the items that are in storage, which we've coordinated, you know, get, get to the house and get set up and installed true to our vision. Okay, that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you so, so much to James, who is just an absolute dream client from beginning to end. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you next time.